G'day. Today's the final episode of uh, fixing up this thing. Uh, on the first episode I, I scraped the, the flats. On the second episode I, I did the dovetails and made sure everything was lined up. Uh, and in this episode uh, it's basically the other things that need to be fixed. So the keyways, the dials, the um, the, the general you know, snoking up of gibs and so on uh, to get this back to a, a condition where the the motion is smooth and it's it's relatively accurate and and you know minimal backlash and all that sort of thing. Um, now, one thing I did do bef between this video and the previous was that I actually ground the bottom off. I found that I had a slight um, woof in the bottom and that was giving me some uneven results. So I did that. But apart from that, um, you know, it's it's pretty good. Um, I'm very happy with the result. These are the replacement uh, dovetails for the XY table. Um, they're made out of 5mm st thick steel instead of uh, 3. I think that's 3. They're also the length of the dovetail rather than just a little bit shorter. And I've put this 60 degree angle on there. Now that's pure uh, experimentalism. I've been wanting to try this method out for years after seeing it. Um, basically what you're doing is you're using the dovetail of the thing that it's going into to set your angle. You then push on it with a rod, and uh, this could be slightly bigger, but that's all I had. Um, because I'm doing the second one here, I've actually got some, some rods in here to space that up a little bit so I've got the clearance over the, 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 the surface. And then I've just got a block here to push that all in. The end result is that you've got a, a, a a gib strip with with um, you know two 60 degree uh, angles on it, and that will sit just more nicely in the um, in the XY table. I've machined the uh, the bevels on my replacement uh, gib strips. I've also taken them out of the surface grinder and, and just given them a, a, a clean up. Um, that's around about two and a half thou off there, and as you can see, I've just got a little bit of oxide there, so it just shows how um, unflat. Uh, some of this commercial black bar is. I've only done it on one side because I don't need to, to take anything off here. This is this is going to be, uh, it's not going to be sliding on anything so it can stay in the in the oxide condition, don't mind that. Um, I've put a small um, spot of texture there and I'm just going to hold that there and sort of spot through without having to put a mark on the or put a point on the screw and you can just see I'm getting a little bit of pick up there um, so that's that's where I'll put my uh, locating screw. Um, for those of you wondering why I replaced the Gibbs well this is the, the one that came with it so it's thinner now in terms of thickness that means it's going to uh, be able to deflect more so this will this will be stiffer but also if you look at the width of it um, I've got more width here. Now because I've gone to all the trouble of scraping down the um, the v-grooves here I want that width because that's what gives me that nice comfortable feel and all the rest of it so uh, these things next to useless. I did think at one stage I'd have to you know, remake this knob and remake the, the dial but having another look at them there's plenty of space there so what I think I'll do first or try first is is basically machining that out and then pressing a, a slug of material in there, uh, and that's 10, and that's a that's two mil extra there, so that's 14. So if I put a you know 19 and 20 piece of aluminium in there, and it's only 10 mil thick as well, um, or I could even do steel, I guess um, that should should be all right, and I should be able to then uh, bore that or drill and ream uh, and and broach a keyway in there. Um, as for this, well. What I think I'll do with this is, is basically turn off that outside set of graduation. That's etched, uh, and then I'll, I'll re-graduate that. Um, now, I've t already taken the tape off, so two ways of getting that, uh, that fit are either to put a, uh, a thread in there and have a little thumb screw thing, or put an O-ring inside here or on here or something. Um, and and use that as a, a sort of bit of a friction thing. I'll probably go over the O-ring if I've got one of the right size, but uh, that's that's the plan. Just a thought while doing this too. Um, one of my options here would have been to weld a, uh, a plug-in. Uh, so bore the hole, 
put a chamfer on it, run a bit of world around, clean it up and all that sort of thing. But you notice here that there's the whole bunch of little short chips. Now that suggests to me that this is a free machining grade of aluminium and if you're doing mass production that's probably what you use if there's no chance of it being welded because this particular grade um, which in Australia would be um, uh, I think it would be 211 or something like that doesn't weld very well and so that option's off the, uh, the table so it's basically pushing a plug in now I'm going to aim for a slight interference fit uh, because aluminium when the oxide is scraped off we'll, we'll weld to it like crazy. I'll probably put some Loctite in there as well but uh, that's another option that I've got is, is just yeah um, if, I, if I had a decent interference fit uh, the, the aluminium would just weld to itself. There's my first uh, hand wheel done so you might just be able to pick up the witness line where the new is, is pushed into the old I had something like uh, one to two thou interference, which on a plug, uh, three quarters of an inch size is quite a bit, but I, I pushed that in. I've run a skim cut across the top and across the bottom just to um, make sure it's flat. I mean, the, the bottom surface in particular has thrust bearings on it, so that, that, that does need to be flush. Um, taken that out to uh, 10 millimeters and then broached a, a, a keyway in it. Um, I may have to do a little bit more work because the keys aren't quite fitting but then I think the keys are a little bit uh, ratty anyway so I need to I need to have a look at that anyway uh, but uh, that's that's the that's the the, the, the salvaged uh, hand wheel. I've just re-graduated the dials um, now because this is doing one rev that's uh, two millimeters every every one rev uh, each of these major marks represents 0.1 of a millimeter Given that it's a, a rolled thread uh, and all the rest of it, uh, the you know, 0.05 of a millimetre uh, seems to be, well, it's, it's a bit of an extravagance, but it's filling a space. Uh, the graduations on the previous style were, were you know, ridiculous given the precision of the, of the instrument. But, um, so yes, they are graduated. Uh, I'll come along and put some numbers on there. This whole graduation thing, uh, I, I've just used in the, uh, the the Taylor Taylor Hobson next Taylor Taylor Hobson video so I explain a bit more there um, but uh, this is one of these bits of kit that you make up thinking I'll use that once and it's it, it sort of hangs around forever and is quite useful so uh, I just need to knock some burrs off here and uh, put some numbers on and uh, these these dials will be re-graduated. These keyways need to be uh, redone. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether one of them is to depth and from the, the jagged sort of cuts in there I suspect that um, the width is a little bit dicey as well. Now to do that I can either use my little jigger here, put a square on the across the, the, the flats of the existing key and then turn it 90 degrees and I'll have that square. Um, or I can do the same thing in the in the mill vise, square it up that way, and then turn it that way. End result, though, is that I have the the keyway basically, um, for want of a better term, square to the the axis of the head. So I can put a four mil cutter in there and and, and just sort of relieve that a little bit uh, to get the the depth. I'll flip it on its back like so, touch off the touch off the shaft there and then flip it over. A four, mil, four millimeter keyway should go into the shaft two millimeters and should stick out two millimeters. So if I can make sure it's that, uh, I'll save myself a lot of work. I want to do something about the fit of these uh, nuts in the, in the casting there. It's a bit too loose for my liking. Um, originally I was going to sleeve the, the casting, but there's not much sort of uh, meat between the two holes. And so instead of doing that, what I'm doing is I'm machining down that uh, spigot. I've got a boss made out of, this is actually nickel alley bronze, uh, which I'll, I'll push onto there like that. And then I'm going to machine that down to the, to the, the final size. And I'm hoping that'll give me a snug fit uh, because I have brass on cast iron, excellent bearing. I've got my uh, nuts uh, bushed and they're quite a 
quite a neat fit there, certainly less than the, the, the 20 thou. I think I, by, the, by uh, measurement I got something like 1 thou clearance. Um, but I did have to uh, polish up the holes a bit. The holes are a little bit bell-mouthed and they're also a bit rough inside, so uh, that might be out to, to, to two. But anyway, that's, that's spinning nicely and up and down a little bit without over the top. Uh, and there's the, uh, there's the other, other one. A little bit tighter, but um, I'm expecting that because the screws are straight, these things aren't going to move much anyway. Uh, it's really just you know, finding, finding their spot and they'll, they'll probably stay there. Assembly time. I've put a light film of oil on all the, all the sliding surfaces and also on the, on the nut pushes as well. Uh, I've also got one on the, on the gib there. That goes in. So now, on the original they had socket head cap screws in there. Um, I don't like those. I may have to have one for um, tightening up, uh, and at least until I get a, a proper handle sorted for this. But instead, what I'm using here is, a, is just a, a long grub screw. And that's going to go through and push on the, the gib strip there. And I won't bore you with all the rest of this stuff, but basically once you get that tightened up to where you want it, uh, and usually I take it up to tight and then just back it off just a, a fraction of a turn. And then, let's see if we can get a nut that fits. There we go. And then I'll come in and I'll lock that with a spanner um, while holding the end there to get that, that fit. And that's, that's how I set these things up. So I've got this to do, and then I've got this, this top one to do. These things are pretty straightforward. Um, you can see there how I've got the, the screw to, to pivot, and, it, and it'll lift a little bit, but it's certainly nowhere near as dodgy as it was. Um, there's a, a bearing that goes in there. Uh, I think there's a slight burr here, because that, that goes on a little bit uh, harder than it should. Uh, and then aluminium cover, a couple of socket head cap screws. not sure how well these work. This particular um, part was misaligned when I took it apart, but I thought I'll just do this to show you how it all actually does go. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these screws. I think I'll be replacing them at some stage, but we'll see. Uh, key goes in there. There's another bearing, once again packed with grease. I must admit I don't particularly like this the, the way they've designed this, but uh, there's my, my uh, handle, and the bearing goes in there, and then the keyway just sort of sits on top. So that's a bit, uh, I think that's a bit dodgy myself. Um, the whole lot is kept in place with a, with a nylock nut, so that goes on the end, uh, and once again that gets locked up, and then back off a little bit to, um, you know, give a bit of, bit of free play. Now... As you can see, you can lock the bearings up a little bit too much. Now, one of the things about this is that um, it'll be a little bit stiff, uh, and that'll require a little bit of adjustment of um, the gibs and uh, possibly the bearing part here. Um, but, you know, that'll, that'll basically do the job. So, that's my XY table. Um, so I need to, to work this in a bit and uh, possibly strip it down and just you know re-lubricate and all that sort of thing because there will be some metal filings and things that come in but basically there it is so thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you for the next one